Uh, and also, I think we're working on Gordon Pinson as well. Gordon Pinson will be coming up on the show. A great actor. I'm looking forward to having him on. Our, our next guest, uh, one of the biggest rock stars of, of, of our time, for sure. I'm talking about Chris Cornell. Chris uh, was a massive uh, performer back in the early 90s. He was a lead singer of Soundgarden more recently for Audio Slave, sold millions and millions of records. Uh, and he, again, a great singer. I mean, in, in the era of, you know why all those bands want to sound like Eddie Vedder? Like, brrr, brrr. All those Pearl Jammy Cher sounding bands, right? Boom, 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 boom. It's because they all sang really low, right? So everybody could be like, hear me spoken, <laughs> You could never do that to Chris Cornell because he could sing. He was way up here, his pitch was higher, it made him stand out. Plus, a lot of the stuff came from very dark places in his life. Uh, and it is sad that sometimes your worst moments produce your best art. But there's lots to talk about. He hasn't done a lot of television, but we've caught him. Chris Cornell, here's his bio. Right, grab my hands, my friend, and let me take you back to a time long ago referred to as back in the day, the early 90s. Remember the music scene? Grunge exploded. Now, we all know that the Seattle bands became world famous, and while the bands were famous, their lead singers became icons. And the holy trinity of the grunge scene were as follows. Kurt Cobain and Nirvana, Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder, and Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Chris had a powerful voice very dark lyrics. He appealed to many people. Let's be honest, a lot of people thought he was handsome as well. So what's Chris's story? Well, I'll tell you. He is a Seattler, tried and true, born and raised in the city of the rain. Now, as a young man, his parents had split up. And like a lot of kids who go through that, well, they have a different way of handling it. Chris became depressed. He tried to escape depression with music and booze. Now, Chris got into music very young. And by 1984, he formed a band called Soundgarden. They were one of the first Seattle bands, not counting Jimi Hendrix, to sign a major record deal. A bunch of independent EPs came out, and then in the early 90s, they had a big one. Bad Motor Finger. Now, while songs like Jesus Christ Pose and the like got people paying attention to Soundgarden, it wasn't until a few years later, 1994, when they put out Super Unknown, that they became Super Known. That record debuted at number one on the Billboard charts, even won the guys a couple of Grammy Awards. But like many scenes, they're bound and doomed to end. And like many grunge bands, Soundgarden's time at the top was pretty quick. It'll be like solo record, solo record, 